from this seven mistakes probably couple of them i didn't make them from my day one because i learned from other successful people so i avoided them and they helped me to always double every year first year i made 55 transactions second year 100 plus transactions and third year 175 and this year this is the fourth year not even halfway through we are already at 70 transactions plus Namaskar, welcome back to my channel. This is Aditya Soma. I'm a lead sales representative with Fin City Real Estate team. And you know, in this channel, I talk a lot about uh, achieving financial freedom through real estate. So if that's the subject you're interested in, then you're at the right place. And you know, I have made a lot of videos about different strategies, especially birth strategy, how those birth strategies help me to achieve financial freedom. I'm also a real estate agent and I've been a top rated agent in Windsor for last two, three years. And also I have a team of five agents and, uh, you know, three other assistants. So, and you know, last year my gross commission been over a million and this is only fourth year I'm in the business. So the third year was over a gross over a million. So that's the reason I thought it's a perfect time for me to talk about some of the mistakes that I have made. And you know, that I corrected er over the period. So that helped me to produce better and better every year. And that's the reason I'm sharing with you all these mistakes because you don't have to make the same mistakes, trust me. And especially when there are thousands of people already travel the path that you want to travel. And if they share their success tips and their failure tips, you better listen carefully because that's exactly what I have done. And you know, there are a lot of mistakes that from this seven mistakes, probably a couple of them, I didn't make them from my day one because I learned from other successful people told me that they have seen people make these mistakes or they have personally made. So I avoided them and they helped me to always double every year. First year I made 55 transactions, second year 100 plus transactions and third year 175. And this year, this is the fourth year, not even halfway through, we are already at 70 transactions plus. It's only fourth month so far for me being in the business. So uh, again, hope you will pay full attention, especially if you wanna become a top realtor in your area, you better. And let me know in the comments, and uh, you know, what you can resonate with, which mistakes, if you are a realtor already been, which mistakes you have made so far in your business and how you corrected so that we can learn from each other experience, right? I'm sorry to interrupt you on your video. I have a quick announcement, just 15, 20 seconds. I'm conducting a free webinar for real estate agents like you who wants to make six figure or seven figure income in this ever changing market. Because you know, right now, every listing is taking longer to sell. Every buyer is afraid to write an offer because interest rates are going up, market is going to crash. So how can you as a real estate agent make six figure, seven figure income? So that's what we're gonna talk uh, in this webinar. So make sure to click the link in the description, a free webinar just for realtors like you. Make sure to share it with your friends. I'll see you there. So the first mistake, the first, uh, you know, major, major mistake that I have seen personally, I haven't made this, but I have seen many new agents do is they focus a lot on commission, not on relation. So what I mean by that, because, you know, when you're starting out, you have to build a lot of relations. If you're meeting a new person, instead of like, you know, trying to look them as your customer or client who is gonna buy or sell with you right away because now you're just putting a dollar value for them. If they don't make a transaction right then, then you just don't build a relation with them. Instead, you know, personally, I have started networking like in 2016. This is like three years before I became a realtor because at that time I wanted to become an investor. I wanna, you know, buy a lot of rentals. So I started building my network. And what I used to do is like, I go to this networking events and I build the relations, like the relations in the sense, I don't talk about, you know, hey, here's my business card. Call me if you need any help. Nope, I talk to them. I learn about them. Hey, what do you do for a living? You know, where do you came from? What's your background? You know, what, what are your hobbies? I try to connect in a personal level. So the good relation I have, the better relation I have with them, over the period, that relation will produce the results. Because you know, now if I have a good relation with one person, if they like and trust me, they're gonna share my contact with their friends and family. Hey, if you are looking to do some real estate transactions, I know a good guy, here is contact, talk to them. That's how the relations help you in the long run. But if you're like, you know, trying to help a client just to con um, just to help them buy a property and you know that you will get 10,000 commission if you make them, you know, buy the property and you're not even thinking about their needs properly, you're just trying to 
you know send every property that they come across and write offers for every property that you know it might not even fit the requirements then you know you might get the sale but you don't have a relation with that client so that in a long run you're not building up so that you know my personal experience is always build the relations not look after the commission and number two and personally i have made this mistake which is communication is a key in this business what i mean by that let me elaborate a little bit more you know when i'm working with a buyer or a seller so buyers they are looking for properties right so if i'm not in touch with them almost every alternative day make sure i send them the properties that they might be interested in every day-to-day -day basis they're gonna find somewhere else right like they're gonna find someone who is gonna communicate with them who is gonna look after their needs same thing if i'm listing a property if i don't communicate with my clients almost every alternative day saying what's the status what's happening now they feel like lost so when they are lost we lost them uh, from a client from Toronto, uh, again, you know, we had a very good relation. I built that relation, but um, I thought, you know, hey, they are they are aware of every process. I don't have to update them every time. Then, you know, after like 10 days, the property on the market, on the offer day, I called them up. They're like, where are you gone all these days? And, you know, we didn't had enough interest. We didn't had enough offers. Now they decided to cancel the listing because I didn't communicate well enough with them to keep them in the loop for everything. And I totally respected them. And I didn't know at that time. What I did is I asked them, hey, if you don't mind, can you share feedback? What was the reason that you don't want to continue? Because, you know, honestly, at that point, I didn't realize that this was my very first few days, a few months in the business, right? So they said, hey, we were expecting you to communicate with us what's happening on every step, what you're doing then i realized oh my god yeah that's true i just put them in the forest there is no communication so they don't know what's happening they just blindly trusted me but that doesn't mean that that trust will continue till the end if i don't communicate so same thing right with the buyers sellers with the agents even when you're a listing agent you're communicating with the buyer agents and you're a buyer agent you're communicating with the listing agent so make sure the communication is clear and you communicate on a consistent basis and number three again being an indian personally i have made this in the, my first year i have to work really hard to change this is showing up on time i any appointments that i schedule i have to show up on time because you know for, we even often joke with, with my friends and me you know oh are you coming for indian standard time or canadian standard time because canadian means like it's on time <laughs> if it's indian it's like one hour late or two hours late but again i realized very soon in this business if you're not committed if you're not respecting other people's time when you're giving a time let's say two o'clock you have to show up on time no matter what happens but again we are human beings there might be some unexpected delays and you have to communicate that so going back to the same point too right communication even if i'm getting late like by two minutes nowadays again i don't say that i won't be late anymore but even if i'm late by two minutes even one minute i text them hey i'm sorry i might be late for one minute or two minutes i might be late for 10 minutes but i make sure i'll do my thousand percent best to be on time because you know appointments means like when you show on time First of all, they respect you because you respected their time. And this, the clients, you know, anyone, they gauge your interest, right? They, if you're on time, that means you're committed to your business and people respect that. So you, you gain respect and you're showing that you're building that reputation. So make sure you show up on time for any appointment you set. If you cannot, don't set an appointment. Just reschedule for another time where you can be available, you can be present at that time. And also like, you know, when you're scheduling for yourself different showings, try to give like, you know, enough time period between each showing so show that you don't get delayed between one appointment to another appointment. Because, you know, the time is something very precious and everyone wants you to respect their time and likewise if you don't respect their time they're not going to respect your time along the way so make sure you show up on time and the fourth mistake is our ego leave your ego at your home what i mean by that because you know this is something that i have seen other people make it and even personally i made like once or twice you know i lost my temper so you know there was a situation where one of my clients is looking to buy an off property you know initially he is interested in making an offer on a property that was like over 900,000 worth property but he said i want to write an offer for 600,000 something like it's like 
two three hundred thousand off i'm like i lost my temper and said no if, the, if you want to write that low offer i don't want to write work with you that was super rude i kept my ego you know that was i was not supposed to do instead i should have just said hey here's the recent sales in the area here's what the market value look like and what you're asking is this price it's like you know three hundred thousand less and you know generally when it's on the market when there is you know a couple of there was a one or two offers on that table already so when this is the situation you know this is realistically this is what is going to happen and then still follow his request which is writing that offer but instead i didn't do that right like so i literally lost that client and uh, one day i think we met somewhere and he said like you know you know the reason i stopped working with you and i bought the property for like 900,000 at the end anyways he bought property anyways for 900,000 because someone explained him better than me and I have seen some other people too you know I was there was a listing on the market and this happened actually very recently the property the sellers wanted a million dollars and I wrote an offer no conditions for 800,000 and I sent the offer no conditions clean offer and I sent the offer and I called the agent hey I'm just calling to let you know that I wrote an offer for your listing and here's my offer and he's like what 800,000 and he just hang up the phone so just think from you know my position right like so when I'm in the opposite end I see this person lost his temper so now how I'm going to behave I'm going to lose my temper too right like so again I didn't do that because now I learned my lesson from the past instead because we are professionals we are just here to represent our clients interest and also we are here to give them the data to make them understand what the market is you know how the data is then so that they can get educated along the way sometimes you know when someone is coming to you in the beginning that's their first step they're still learning they don't know so we as a professionals we should not keep that ego or you know put our ego aside and guide them as professionals and number five never be hesitant or afraid to give your suggestions let me elaborate this because you know in the first year i had some you know seller called me up asking to list the property and this one was like you know this is like two years ago and this was a million dollar listing so when it was a million dollar listing i was like super excited and also a little bit scared so when I went for the listing appointment, I saw some things that, you know, the property would need that could definitely help to sell the property quicker and also he could get better price. So I don't know what I was thinking, but I was afraid to give my suggestions to the seller because I thought I would lose the deal. And same thing for buyers, right? When I'm representing the buyer, again, you know, now I learned my lesson, I'm not doing that, but I have seen realtors, you know, some of the realtors, new realtors in my team, when they were talking to the buyers, they're afraid to say that, hey, there is a foundation crack, maybe let's get an inspection. They're afraid to make that suggestions because, you know, don't forget here, your clients are trusting on you and they're investing, you know, one of the biggest, uh, you know, expense in their whole life. They haven't spent that much money on anything else. So that means they will be afraid. But you as a professional, you're there to guide them, show them what's right, what's wrong, give your suggestions along the way. And, you know, if they respond back saying, hey, you know what, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Don't get offended by that. Again, going back to the previous uh, mistake, which is don't let your ego, you know, overtake that. Because if they said something that they don't want to do for suggestions that you've given and client doesn't want to do follow your suggestions, that doesn't mean they're rejecting you. It's just they're at a point in time, probably they could not do that things. So take it as a profession. So still help them because still help them to achieve their goal. That's what professionals does. And the sixth mistake I see many new agents make, you know, when I have coached at least a seven, eight new agents in my career so far. And personally, I was a new agent uh, in 2019-20. So one of the things is making sure to review every line in the document and the MLS. Like, for example, you know, some properties have a septic tank. Even my own house had a septic tank. This was before I became a realtor, uh, the house that I'm living right now had a septic tank but I didn't look through the listing and the age did not even explain me told me that this property has a septic tank and I didn't know at that time what septic tank means and I, I realized I had to face so many problems so many challenges and I cursed my realtor I never even went back to this particular realtor because he didn't explain me so I lost that relation just because you know my realtor did not explain me and same thing we come across so many things right like there are rental items in the property like hot water tank is a rental furnace is a rental sometimes 
or sometimes there is like two fridges if you don't explicitly mention everything that is in there anything you know that is present in the property it's your responsibility to review as a professional because you know with this docu sign people are not completely paying full attention so you as a professional you have to pay attention to every detail and make sure you give all the heads up to your clients so they don't miss and you know if those issues come up before closing now the closing is getting delayed or they're not even like they're super upset you're going to lose the relations just because you could have avoided that by just making sure you review the documents review the all the information properly and convey that to your clients if you would have done that in the beginning you would you would save your relation you would save you would actually get more referrals and all last one but not the least one the seventh mistake is making sure you're including all required clauses so if you're representing a buyer make sure you know what are the things that you want to convey to your sellers like you know condition for financing or condition for inspection or the tenant clauses assuming the tenants or you know uh, getting the vacant position or making sure there is x amount of rent coming in any clauses that you have to make sure you include that and if you're representing the seller you received an offer make sure review all the clauses with your client um, and if there is any questions make sure to consult your broker or lawyer because you know the clauses is something that could break the deal and you know it could become so much challenging especially the some of the major issues that i came across and some of my agents in my team came across is like the tenant clauses like the vacant position so where you know when you're working with the seller and you received an offer and that one had a vacant position clause and if you missed to show that to the seller and if you missed to review that with the seller now the seller missed it and at the before closing the tenants haven't left the property again you know there's so many other things like that um so make sure review with your broker and lawyer get all the required clauses and make sure your client is aware of that so you don't have to lose the deals because of those and again these are the some of the common mistakes that i have seen and let me know if you have done any mistakes that you have seen you know over the period that you improved uh, let me know in the comments below because you know we all can learn from each other and make sure hit that thumbs up button i'm aiming for 200 likes by end of this week and just a final thoughts like you know final just a bonus tip if you want to succeed in this real estate sales agent business ask for feedback because there will be situations happen again in real estate it's like a roller coaster it's the day always like you know some days you have a very good day and some days you will go through some crazy shit happens and there is always something new come up in real estate so when there is something really bad happened your relation with your client broke or you know with another agent broke don't be afraid to pick up your phone and ask for feedback hey what i have done in order to not to lose your deal what should i have done can you give me some feedback so that i can you know it would help me to become better in my business so yeah that's pretty much it guys you know if you watch till there again i'm pretty sure you will be a successful realtor and uh, make sure again check out the other videos until then i'll see you in the next video hope you enjoyed